Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and um, a lot of people have questions about SDRs, about what uh, is the hype of all of this software defined receiver thing. And it has to do in part, and I, I think it has to do in a huge part actually, uh, with the visuals that you have. A standard radio will let you listen to one frequency. And that is, um, you know, you'll have to tune around and, and find the signals as you tune pretty much uh, without really knowing what you're going to find because you don't know if there's a signal there or not. If we look here, for example, I'm on CHU 3330. But look here on the right side, there's some signal here that is that showed up as I was looking at 3330. And you can hear it over here. So this sounds like some kind of AL transmission or something. Now, it appeared while I was actually tuned to 3330, and that's the appealing side of using an SDR. The waterfall shows you around the frequency you're listening to. Depending on the software-defined receiver you're getting, you have more or less visible spectrum here. And if there is one advantage is that I don't know how many signals that I actually was able to find that weren't actually, I would never have known they were there if it wasn't for that. So if I tune 5505 five, and look if I can hear, for example, Shannon, still a little quite early for that here so I'm not hearing much right now you can look around and see if there's something else maybe a signal will appear maybe something will be there that you didn't see so whatever frequency you're tuned to you always have a look around of the different signals that could be here so for example in 7500 there's something weak here that I can look at there's 7475 now this is not the best time right now for these frequencies, but depending on where I'm going to tune, I'll always have a look around what's available. So here I'm on WWV 10 megahertz. Well, look at that. There's something here on 10051-ish. I know what it is, but you know, I would not if you would, if you didn't know actually what could be there, you didn't know that there was something here and that um, you could actually tune to. Uh, I see that there's a signal right here. So let's check it out here. Something else here. And here we have Morse code. Now this is the 30 meters uh, amateur radio band, so I'm not surprised that there's a Morse code signal there. But you could actually visualize everything in a frequency spectrum, in a frequency range. And you can increase that. So here if I go at the top, and I say I want to have bigger spectrum, 4 megahertz, for example. Now I'm on this frequency again, but I can see a lot more spectrum. I see above 11 megahertz on the left side, on the right side, sorry. I can actually see uh, way down past the, uh, you know, 9 megahertz um, in, in this mode. So depending on the SDR, once again, that you use, some have a broader uh, look. You could have a, you know, here as a glance of 31 meters, for example. Uh, I can see that here there's a signal. Well, that's Spain 9690. So Spain 9690. I go here and there's something else. There's uh, Radio Martin on 565 and so on. It has, and it's nice to give you that aspect of seeing, not just listening. And of course, with a simple click on the display, you have the possibility to just check out what is that new signal that just appeared that wasn't there. And this is something amazing about SDRs. And that's why a lot of people tend to fall for the SDRs, for the software-defined receivers, is that they add new ways of, you know, searching the band, new ways of knowing what's out there and this is kind of cool uh when you are you know uh, a dxer that's searching for new signals for uh, anything that could be out there at least now you have a visual of all of this 
If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.